Hello, welcome to the Jazz Ranch, hip cats and groovy chicks and finger popping daddies. I have a special program for you this evening and it's based on comparing Bill Evans to Wynton Kelly and the connection that the two of them have and specifically talking about a recording that both of them made of the great song by Tad Dameron called If You Could See Me Now. Now, you know, both of these great genius pianists played on the famous recording by Miles Davis called Kind of Blue. And yet they play very differently from each other and yet have similar qualities in their playing. And so I'm going to talk about this in this video and I'm going to play the song for you If You Could See Me Now by Tad Dameron. So we'll start out and I'll play it for you and then later on I'll talk about it and talk about some of the aspects of their playing that are illustrated in this song and the recordings they made of this song. So here we go now with a great song by Tad Dameron. My interpretation now of If You Could See Me Now. Here we go.
Okay, welcome to the Jazz Ranch. And this is where I explain what I play and talk about it. I call this video the Bill Evans Winton Kelly Connection. And what I mean by that is how they were connected musically through this song, if you could see me now, and also on recordings. And specifically, they played on the same record with Miles Davis, the famous recording, Kind of Blue. Um, probably the most famous jazz album of all time. And they both play very differently from each other, but they were contemporaries. Bill Evans was born in 1929 and uh, Wynton Kelly in 1931, so they, they lived the same uh, period of time. And yet they're playing and their styles are very, very different and yet similar in some ways. They're both very melodic players. They both play with a, a great touch. I mean, Bill Evans is probably more well known to this day than Wynton Kelly. Um, he's probably more intellectual in his playing and more innovative maybe. And um, Wynton Kelly is perhaps more blues oriented and, and maybe harder swinging in terms of post bebop and that kind of thing. But they're both equally great and they influenced me and they both recorded definitive recordings of this song If You Could See Me Now by Tad Dameron. You know, the Bill, Bill Evans recorded it actually twice, first on Moonbeam's album and then on the Trio 65. In both cases he was with um, Chuck Israels. And um, I heard both of these pianists early on in New York. Probably I would say Winton Kelly, I heard him in in 63 at Birdland and I heard Bill Evans in 64 at the Vanguard. That was my first time hearing him and he was playing with Gary Peacock and Paul Motion, and he only recorded one album with Gary Peacock, and it was called Trio 64. Um, anyway, I love this song, and that's why I wanted to play it. And also, I wanted to play it because I wanted to show you a couple things about Bill Evans playing and Winton Kelly's playing. First thing is that Winton plays this more linear, and he's, he's playing it in a quartet setting with Wes Montgomery on a famous recording called Smoking at at the uh, half note and that uh, was a famous club back in the 50s and 60s but anyway he's playing it more like maybe and then he, ha he has the backing of, of uh, Russ Montgomery so he doesn't really need to chord much but Bill Evans is playing with a trio so he, he what he does is he chords the melody like in this way let's see So he gets that chordal sound. Now, he does this a lot. Like, if you listen to his recordings, he makes the melody very dense by voicing it often in what I would call the, the um, close voicings, locked hands technique. Locked hands technique means he's doubling the melody in his left hand like this. Like this. So it sounds like this. Now you want to learn that technique if you're a pianist because it's really uh, definitive and important jazz piano technique. You know, like... Um, It was uh, Mel Buckner and Nat King Cole played it and Oscar Peterson played it. Ahmed Jamal, Bill Evans, they all played this technique. And you're doubling the melody in the left hand and you're playing block chords in the right hand. Mostly in six and in, as Barry Harris called it, you know, you diminish six scale. So you're doing the, uh, you know, like a. putting those diminished chords in between on the passing tones. 
So that's how Bill Evans plays the melody with those chords. Um, and then he does that throughout, you know, I mean, even on the uh, bridge, he's got, uh, you know, this part, the second part of the bridge. You know, he, he fills in the harmony in both hands. But he also plays, as does West, I mean Winton, in rootless chords, like that. Rootless chords in the left hand, you know, like a... And he does this interesting thing, instead of just repeating that melody, He does this descending line from the F minor chord. So there's an A flat, relative minor, B F minor. So he goes down the scale to the D flat minor nine chord, G flat. So he's he's doing things. He's very creative about how he reharmonizes. And the other thing he does is he uses tritone substitutes. So on the bridge he goes uh, Now he's going to go to move to an A minor chord there from the C C major. So he moves by the tritone sub it. Alters it to an A dominant and then an E flat 7 to a D minor. So he's using the tritone substitutes a lot, all the time. He's using all throughout any song you listen to, to uh, that Bill Evans plays. He will be using those tritone substitutes, and they create such density in the harmony and beauty in it. Like you know, instead of just having it be like this, um, He has this. Uh, he has that harmonic passage, so he has so much harmony. He hears so much. I mean, the amazing thing is what he is able to hear. Now, on the solo, I played more like um, Wynton Kelly than I did like Bill Evans. First of all, it's very difficult to play like Bill Evans soloing. Um, you can try to do it, but you'll, you might even transcribe his solo or learn it on, on a transcription page and uh, duplicate it very well, but you'll never really get the feel quite like he has it. But one thing that Winton does that Bill Evans doesn't do much, he does these bebop turns like... So I did that on my solo. You know, like, um, you know, like that kind of thing. That's a Wynton Kelly thing, and it's very swinging, and it's typical bebop. And he's more of a he's more of a hard bop player, but he really has that that it's a very bluesy. He has that kind of thing happening in his solo. So I try to emulate that a little bit. Um, Bill Evans, uh, one of the unique features of his solo playing is that he does this thing with his left hand where he complements the right and plays a lot of these uh, quarter note triplets like He does that kind of thing, where he's complementing the melody rhythm. You hear that? So that's a lot. I try to emulate a little bit of that in the solo as well. I wanted to talk about a couple other aspects of Bill's and Winton's concepts on transitions. Now, the transition from the head into the solo, where you have, it resolves on the one chord, and then it goes to 2-5. Uh, Winton would usually play 
a linear thing in his right hand over that. Maybe with a maybe with a uh, pedal tone. What Bill Evans does, this is unique to his sound, is he plays a chordal um, fill in which the chord is sounding like this. That sound. Now what is that? No. Well, that is a uh, diminished chord with the major seven on top and the melody being a top note. He plays it more dense than that, I've simplified it. But to get that chord, you just play a first inversion triad, like a G and first inversion. Put the root on the bottom, then raise the root a half step. You get a diminished chord with a major seven in it. He uses that sound on Spring Is Here, but he uses a lot in transitions, and he plays it more dense than that. He has more notes in there. But you'll hear him do that on, on this song in the transition. Now the other transition is going from the bridge to the last A and they both have different concepts of that. Uh, Bill, Bill just plays something that maybe a diminished run on a 2-5. Instead of 2-5, uh, Winton plays 2-3-4-5 as a rising line. to the one chord. So that rising line is a variation on a 2-5, another way to play a 2-5 that is, that is unique that Winton does there. Um, the other thing is that uh, on these lines, you won't hear Bill Evans do that kind of a, a turn, a bebop turn, but you'll hear Winton play. More. Bill Evans plays more like running lines, then he'll use a grace note or a series of grace notes. Don't hear him do the turn so much in that way. So there's a couple of more ideas for you. So at the end now, um, Witten did th something where he rolls between the, the one chord and the four chord, which is dominant. So I tried to show that kind of concept at the end. So you really want to get these two recordings, or three of them, and listen to these interpretations of this song if you love it, like I do. I love this song. And you might want to find some other versions of it as well, but these are the two definitive versions that are played by a pianist that I know of. So I hope you enjoyed this, and we'll have a sign-off. Here we go. Signing off from the Jazz Ranch. Thanks so much for tuning in this evening. I hope you enjoyed this. Please write to me. I hope to hear from you. I always respond to all comments if you give me enough time. It might take me a month, but I will write back to you. So until next time, I'll say in the words of my great friend upstairs, Hermie Dressel, who always, when I left his office, he always said to me, Swing loose! <laughs> and we'll see you next time around. Bye-bye.